It's 93.5 K-Day Morning Show. Romeo holding it down, man. Five, five, Freddy in the building. What up, family? Hey, what's happening, man? It's happy to be here. K-Day. Good yeah. morning. Hey, man, we love having you here on the West Side. And I'm going to tell you right now, this contact has a visual history of hip-hop. Now, you're the creative director of this project. Yes, yes. The, the curator is a woman by the name of Vicky Toback. Uh -huh. And this is actually the first ever comprehensive photo exib exhibit of yeah. the history of hip-hop images. Yeah. And so from the very beginning all the way up to... Kendrick, ASAP Rocky, and stuff like that that's going on now. Man, and, and it's so major. I had a chance to peep a little bit of it. I'm looking forward to going tonight for the preview, you know what I'm saying, the premiere and check it out. Yeah. Uh, for people who may not know, you've been doing graffiti for a while, so you've always no, I, had this. Yeah, I did graffiti originally, and right. then I switched to doing, you know, making art. Right. I'm one of the first people that did graffiti on the subways and the walls exactly. way back in the days, and then transitioned to showing my work in galleries, et cetera, and museums and things like that now. And when we think about one of the first to do that, I mean, the first hip-hop film, can we talk about Wild yeah, Style? Yeah, Wild Style was the first movie on hip-hop that I had the idea for and uh, did all the original music. One of the producers, and then I ended up being one of the featured actors. That wasn't a plan, but I Oh, it wasn't? Up, nah, I wasn't trying to be on camera for none <laughs> of this. I was trying to be low-key in the background, right. you know, being the puppeteer, pulling the strings. But the last minute, we had cast every role, and the 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 director, Charlie Ahern, was like, why don't you do it, Fred? And I yeah. was like, oh, man. And then I did it, so. And, and, nah, and, and you do it well. I mean, everything yeah. you seem to touch, man, you definitely represent with it. Uh, yeah, I, I push the work in. Yes, sir. You definitely do, man. Been doing yeah. it for a long time. Yeah, Let's yeah. talk about the first hip-hop tour in Europe. Yeah, the first hip-hop tour in Europe, that's good, 1982. Yeah. Um, man, this was the realest hip-hop version of a kind of experience. We had the original graffiti artists um, on stage doing paintings, Futura, yeah. Dondi, cats like that. And then you had DJs. You had Africa Bambada. You had Grand Mix of DSC. <sighs> you had... Uh, you know, really early pioneers, and then you had the Rocksteady crew breakdancing. Yeah. And then you had these, there's something that didn't really get as big as it could have, but it's something called Double Dutch. It's a kind of jump roping thing that girls would do in the hood. Right. These particular girls that we went on the road with, they had won the, they had won the championship for doing Double Dutch. So they can turn two ropes in and out of each other, and yeah. the girls jump in with an ill rhythm. And then they would do tricks while jumping in between these two ropes. Very amazing. Yeah. And that tour, we went around, we went across France and a couple of gigs in England. And that was the first time a real live version of hip hop went, went overseas, went to Europe. Now let's think about it. Hip hop was just scratching the surface. We're it talking, was. what year did this happen? This was 82. And you yeah. got kids that you, they're getting their passport stamp and they're going That's across right. the world. Like, That's right. Nobody had really left New York City for the most part, let yeah. alone flying across the Atlantic. Took them off the but block and let them see the world. We did, yeah. And we tore it up. Um, and it was incredible because, you know, there really had been no real hip-hop tours like this, you know. Yeah. Maybe Rapper's Delight was just coming out. So it was the very, very beginning of it all. But we all just kept it really natural. We just moved around on stage effortlessly. People would be spray painting in the background, mm -hmm. DJs playing records, you know. And then it just was interesting. And people, we never knew it was going to connect with people overseas, right. to be honest with you. Because you know, rap music is an English language based form of communication, a form of entertainment. But mm -hmm. they felt the energy, they felt the vibes, and they got into it. In fact, in France, what was interesting is, to this day, France is still the second biggest market for hip hop. Really? Outside, yeah, outside of America. I mean, with everything streaming now, it's right. a different game, but that tour had a lot to do with it. And what we found out was the Ghetto folks, if you want to be the, you know, to, to over, overly simplify, the poorer peoples, oftentimes North African, um, poor French, mm -hmm. French Moroccan, they lived in the suburbs outside of Paris. Okay. And when people would say the suburbs, I'm thinking, you know, like in New York, when you say suburbs, that's a little, that's affluent. Right. In Paris, that's where the projects, that's where the hood is. And so that's where hip hop took root in France and got strong because there was a lot of people over there that was pushed out, 
left in the projects outside of the sexy city of Paris. Yeah. And they let themselves be heard. Um, if anybody's really curious about getting a glimpse at that world, there was a movie that came out, a French movie called La Haine. Actually, that means The Hate. Mm. You can go on YouTube and probably see chunks of it. Okay. And that's a movie that was shot in the projects in Paris. I think the police had ran up and hurt somebody, maybe killed somebody, and the hood was like tearing shit up. Like it was riots Damn. going on in the street. Yeah, but yeah. it was really well done. It was like, you would think this was really like a real, like um, almost like a documentary. Mm -hmm. Man, so that now, getting balanced. a lot of information right now from yeah. 5 Five Fred is going down on K-Day Morning Show, the man of many firsts. I love saying that because it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Yo, MTV Raps. How did that even come to life? How did that well, come about? You know, Yo, MTV Raps was interesting. So I had did the movie Wild Style. Yep. I was hanging out on the downtown scene in New York, trying to get my artwork and other things I was trying to do popping. Yeah. There was no positive press, no press really, except that people in the city hated the fact that we were spray painting up everything and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to express the fact that this was a creative movement that was going on with black and Latino people in the city, and we was trying to be heard. And yeah. I was the person that could articulate some of these ideas and what have you. And so I was getting doing some of the first press and what have you. And then I had connected with Blondie from a, like a new wave group. Yeah. And um, they kind of mentored me, took me under their wing and what have you. And I'm schooling them on what was going on in the Bronx with the beginnings of hip hop. And they went and made a record called Rapture and then shouted me out on the yeah, record. Which that was became, major. Yeah, it was a big record. It went number one all over the world. And that really was the first time a lot of people heard rapping before they really knew this was a whole movement. So right. they thought this Blondie was just playing around, <laughs> playing some like word type games with this little thing she was doing, saying Fab Five, Freddie told me everybody's fly. Come on, dog. A lot of people think I'm saying Fab Five Freddy told me everybody's high, but it's all good. But it's everybody's <laughs> we will take that one too, though. Ain't you know, for real, one. for real. It's all good. I'm not mad. Not at and all. so when MT, when rap music was selling like crazy with no marketing, no promotion, Run DMC, LL, like the first records was coming out, yeah. but they were selling like crazy with nothing. And people in the MTV offices were trying to get them to pay attention. It was a guy by the name of Ted Demi, mm -hmm. sadly, who passed away, and another cat, Peter Doherty. These were two dudes up in MTV, both sadly passed away. I said, man, we got to give this a shot. And so they go, okay, we'll try it out. Who, who, who should we get? And they said, let's get this guy, Fab Five Freddy, because yeah. they knew me from being on the downtown scene in New York. Um, you know, I could formulate a couple of sentences, you know, and uh, <laughs> articulate, if you will, you know what I'm saying? And they gave it a shot, and immediately it was the highest rated show that MTV had ever did at that time. Wow. And, then, and it just blasted through like a rocket, you feel me? And then the show went, went on, and... My whole concept was like, you know, I didn't want to be cooped up in the studio. I wanted to be on the street, mm -hmm. in the basements, in the studios, like wherever the artists were. Like I wanted to be there with them. That would give me the energy to. So they followed your lead on this. Your oh, no you question. Like, there were no shows filmed like I was like your MTV raps. MTV, bunch of VJs, kind of corny, would be sitting in the studio mm -hmm. playing a lot of rock music, a lot of lame cats with like crazy hairdos and whatever, and you know rock and roll type energy and then they came with me and I you know it was like boom straight out of Compton you know from hood to hood whatever you know what I'm saying yeah and it, and it, and it was a good look yeah man you definitely took it right to the streets love watching that man you did your thing and now we go on full circle where we did we doing our thing with Netflix yeah I have a film that I directed see I was directing uh, the first music video I directed was my philosophy for Karis one uh -huh. I directed over like during the time I'm because you know doing wild style I learned filmmaking that right. was like classic independent filmmaking the music video thing I was like man I want to express like I could put some pictures together like with these videos you know with the with the, with this music or whatever so I got to do a video for KRS-One, My Philosophy. I did the first videos for Queen Latifah, Ladies First, and Dance For Me. Um, shit, EPMD, Stetsasonic. Uh. I did like a bunch of dope songs. I did yeah. videos for a bunch of dope songs. Videos were dope too. Yeah. And um, that's how I learned filmmaking. So I've always been passionate about that. And recently I just got to direct a film, um, a documentary, on the history of cannabis in America. Yep. Cannabis, music, and people of color. Because I realized that in the beginnings of the popularization of cannabis, it was jazz musicians that were singing 
that was singing about the plant mm -hmm. and using the plant going back into the 1920s. So when black folks, before we had begun to migrate from the South, like New Orleans or whatever, where jazz was invented, coming up to New York, Northern cities, getting away from that Jim Crow oppression from the South and that racism, yep. um, the plant was, was a drug of choice that made people mellow out, get in the zone, as opposed to drinking alcohol. You won't even be able to do all that fly stuff on, on, the, on your instruments. And so that's how cannabis got popular. Numerous artists made records about it, and that continued into hip hop. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to look at that history, which I lay out. Grass is greener, so on Netflix right now, and um, I've been getting really good response because in New York, like we're not like California. We we have medical that's very restrictive. We don't have recreational use yet, mm -hmm. and um, black folks have been black and brown folks have been the most victimized by the po by the police, and so the legislators in New York are trying to get that rectified as well as make sure black, um, black, and, black and brown people get a seat at the table. You right. feel me? Yeah. There's a lot of cornballs that's now jumping in trying to get this money who didn't have nothing to do with the plant. Now they trying to come in all yep, you know, how exactly. to do these style and like we trying to be like, wait, wait, hold up now. Let's make sure that this is an equitable um, situation at the table. Let's, let's, let's let other people sit at this table yeah. and like you know, eat this food, if you will. So exactly, because everybody wants their hands when they see uh, it's gonna be green for real coming exactly. to the table. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Yeah, they 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 trying to get that other green um, <laughs> on top of that green. So we the film is helping people understand. I realize how how uh, consistently racist the system has been against people of color. Yeah, you know that made that popularized the plant. And then the other thing I realized when I was hosting your MTV raps, like Snoop. Cypress, yeah. Method Man, Red Man, all them debuted on TV with me, and they was all strong advocates for the plant. You yeah. feel me? Mm -hmm. It's ironic, and Cypress Hill is in my doc. Mad Hip Hop Heads is in my doc. I got academic scholars, PhDs, activists, politicians, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got like, you know, and uh, Be Real, Cypress is in my film, and they basically like laying it down. Like they said, listen, we could have been a stoner group, but we read Jack Herrera's book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, mm -hmm. which broke down a lot of the things that I look at in my film, like how consistently racist the government was against people of color smoking this plant, how they kept uh, medical research that proved that the plant was beneficial, the yeah. plant wasn't dangerous, you know. And so um, Cypress Hill said that we're, we're going to be advocates as well as like represent the plant and that's what they did and they just last week got their star on the walk of fame which Man, is incredible i was so. sitting front row for that had a chance to be there when snoop got his a couple months ago that's dope. and it's, yeah. it's so major for them and it's ironic we're talking about both these cats because mm -hmm. i do this thing on my show called this or that okay right? okay so if there was a smoke out between snoop dogg and be real who gonna win that smoke out five, man five, that's a good question <laughs> both of them dudes can hit it like chimneys um snoop I don't know, man. I would maybe say Snoop, because Snoop tells this story about being in a smoke out with Willie Nelson. Yeah, who's a I heard about that. Singer, but he's a real, uh, you know, well known cannabis enthusiast. And Snoop says, man, like they was on tour. I think they was in Amsterdam or something, and mm -hmm. they was going. And uh, Willie Nelson smoked out Snoop. Snoop was like, I surrender. <laughs> <laughs> he threw in the towel saying, I'm done. He threw in the towel, baby, for Man. real, for real. But, but the fact that he even went toe-to-toe -to -toe that long yeah, may so, give him the edge over Be Real. For, I mean, you know, I haven't been around. Be Real Puffs, of course, he's an advocate. He's a cannabis entrepreneur. But I've seen Snoop smoke a bit more. Okay. And Snoop is a like a chain smoker of the blunt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In fact, Snoop told me the story. I didn't use it in the film, but he told me the story about how him and Mark the Stewart got tight. Basically, he said that they was um, on one of them roasts. I think that they was roasting Donald Trump, Okay, believe it or not. <laughs> and he was sitting on the roast on, on the Comedy Central or whatever it was, sitting next to Martha Stewart. Mm -hmm. So in, in true Snoop fashion, he changed smoking blunts being Snoop. Martha Stewart goes up and does her bit roasting. 
And then she came back and sat down and Snoop was like, man, Martha Stewart came back and she said, man, I'm usually so tense when I, when I have to do stuff like this. Uh-huh. I, f- I felt so easy and so good about it all. <laughs> Snoop's like, Martha, I have to tell you something. You know, you've been breathing this here secondhand <laughs> cannabis smoke and you got a contact high. Yeah. No pun intended. Boom. Speaking of our show. Here okay. Martha was like, wait a minute. Oh my God, you're right. And that's how Snoop, so, wow. the, so the other producers can see them on the show developing this kind of chemistry right here. And then somebody pitched them a cooking show. Isn't that and so- they still doing that. And they and Martha got down with the plant. Yeah. She's in my movie too for a hot second. She gotta be, man. Yeah. I mean, it's a, and when I think about her and Snoop hanging, that's some of the craziest shit ever for me, man. It is. It I mean, is. but you just never, never know what makes that click. And like, they've, they've built from that. From that moment. You're right. They you did. Know what I mean? And it was a real honest, like, rep- I mean, Snoop's a lovable guy. I mean, yeah. it's real special for me to um, had, have had Snoop on Your MTV Raps in the very beginning. I told, and when you, I had the footage, I, w- I was going to use it in the film, but uh-huh. Snoop was so shy the first time on Your MTV Raps, he would barely hold his head up. Mm. And he was this humble, shy, respectful, and... Um, because I directed his first video, okay. What's My Name, the one where I turned him and the dog pound yeah. into dogs. And I ended up spending that whole summer with Dr. Dre because the first day of shooting in Long Beach turned into a near riot. The, like, L.A. is a strange, not strange, it's just different for me because you don't know how rough a neighborhood is until you see the homies come out. Right, true. And you realize, okay, this is some serious business over here. And they didn't all come out until the first part of the video shoot was um, on top of VIP Records mm-hmm. and Snoop doing a performance. Then we was moving and all these hood cats came out that wouldn't let the crew work. They was all pissed about whatever. And then when we moved to the next location, the pot bubbled up, boiled over, people start fighting, helicopters swooped in, the police yeah. said, this is shut down. Cause the riot had happened not more than a year prior. So okay. the police was on edge. Yeah, they were on edge. They didn't know what to expect. Right? Yeah, so Dr. Dre said, listen, Fab, um, I got to finish Snoop's album. If you can chill, you can stay out here, you can stay with me in Calabasas, whatever. Mm-hmm. I said, man, that'll work. So I stayed with, with Dre, and in between, Dope. occasionally we would dip out and shoot a little scene here, shoot a scene there. And then I got to get a close-up view of the creative process. I got tight with Dre and the fam and Warren G and everybody. And then, um, you know, and the rest was history. I made Man. the video, What's My Name? So there's photos from that shoot in the Contact High exhibit. Um, there's a photographer. That's one of the main images. When you pull up to the Annenberg uh, space for photography in Century City, you'll see on top of the building a giant picture of Snoop. And that's in the scene when I'm shooting him. He's in the bedroom in the opening scene. Yeah, remember when that. When the girl was like, you know, I, I had the little cutie say, um, you know, oh, well, I had Snoop tell the cutie, you don't love me. Yeah. You, you just love, love my doggy style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five, five, Freddy, hanging out with the K-Day Morning Show. Contact high, man. It's free. It's going down in Century City. Yeah. Opens up tomorrow. Make sure you go check it out. A yeah. lot of history in there, man. A lot of history, man. It's a beautiful show. The first ever serious photo exhibit of the history of hip-hop. So from the earliest days, Cold Crush and stuff that was going on in the Bronx yeah. to what's popping now. The icon. And then the other thing is important to understand, like the contact sheet. So now everybody can shoot mad high definition pictures on their phones. Yep. But back then, serious photographers had good quality 35 millimeter cameras. They went to professional photo houses. And before they got the prints, they would get a contact sheet, mm-hmm. which was a sheet with all these little examples of the photos. And the photographers would look at this sheet with a, like a special magnifying glass. It's, it's called a loop. Yep. And they would look at what they wanted to have printed for the pictures that you would see in the source or rap pages, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So what this exhibit does is give you a look at the contact sheets to see other examples, like the famous photo of Biggie with 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 the crown on his head. Yeah, saw that one. You see other images from that shoot. It's a couple of Biggie smiling. So you get more of a the creative process and you see, you know, the photographers will make little marks on the on the contact sheet. So that's a big part of what this show's about Dope. is a look at the creative process and some of the most incredible photos. If you grew up loving hip hop, yeah. Source Magazine, uh, rap pages, different things you've seen 
some of these images. Five Five Freddy, how do you feel about hip hop now? I mean, you've watched it from day one to struggle, and now how it's the number one music in the world. That's true, it is. The number one music on the planet. And you have to be proud about that, man. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm shocked, really, because I never could have imagined this thing would continue to grow and be so strong and become so dominant. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I think about it, I go back to how did this happen? And I feel like the roots are really deep. Like, it really was poor folks who had nothing saying, I'm here. Yeah. Listen to me. Check yeah. me out. I'm going a, I'm, I'm to a tell you how cool I am. Matter of fact, I'm going to make you understand that. Yeah. That's where we came from. And those roots went deep. Those roots went deep down into the ground. And when the roots go deep, a tree can go can grow big and big and tall and strong and Absolutely. all that. And that's really what I, can, I see happening. Because in the many places around the world, you still you got people that really go, I'm going to do this, too, and uh, use it to represent who I am. I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about where I'm from. That blew my mind. And it continues in every country around the world with access to communication. People are rapping. Yeah. People are doing street art. They spray painting. They they dancing. And yeah. that amazes me that it continues yeah. 40 plus years later. It's, it's 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 a beautiful thing, man, and I I'm excited to see what's to come. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm so excited, but I got to put you on the hot seat for one second. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. could give me your top five rappers of all time, dead or alive, may they rest in peace. If you had to name your starting five, five five Freddy, who would it be? You know, my top five, my top ten, or whatever. It changes. If, okay. if it flows, it's different MCs in different eras. I could never with so many artists that have done this. Um, so it comes down to who I'm feeling at the moment. Okay. okay. That's how I get down. And so on the top of my list is a, is a black thought from the roots. Okay. Um, he dropped a 10 minute freestyle last year. That's the greatest ever. One of his, his favorites right his, here. His, his intellect, his wordplay. That's what I get down with. I get down with masterful wordplay. Okay. You feel me? I like a good hook. I like a good beat to, you know, to dance to get, get the ladies bouncing and shaking at a club, that's yeah. cool for me. But when, but like what I really like in terms of the real, you know, meat on the table, if you will, I like some, some dope ass bars. Okay. So I'm a, I like Black Thought, man. And I like, I mean, it's hard to, like, I'm, I didn't prepare, like, I, it's, I don't want to leave nobody out. But, right. But I'll just say among my top five at the moment. I'll take is that. Is Black Thought from the Roots. Yep. If you never heard his freestyle with Funk Flex, go on YouTube and just hit Black Thought Funk Flex. Mm -hmm. And um, 10 minutes of lyrical perfection. His whole swag is, is, is incredible for me. In fact... My cousin is Salam Remy, one of the great producers that too few people know about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He produced all the original music in my film, Grass is Greener. Okay. And we also put out a soundtrack album. You can go on all streaming services right now and download Grass is Greener soundtrack inspired by the movie. Do and that. Black Thought is rapping and singing on one of the cuts. That's dope. Now, his singing style is like on some, like, David Ruffin, he got that warm, soulful flavor, and um, and then he's dropping them bars, and okay. you know, and the locks is on this Bum B, who sadly has some drama down in Texas. Yeah, Bum B is yeah, yep. some some shots were fired, but sad to hear that. But Bum B is good. He's 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 okay. He actually had to fire on somebody, is apparently what I saw in the press. But Bumby yeah. is on the album, and um, and there's a lot of other dope. That Stephen Marley, it's a real interesting record. Okay, so please got to do that, man. Take a look, listen. The grass to, is uh, green on Netflix. Yeah. Contact High is going down Century yeah. City, man. I'm Contact so glad you're on the high. West Coast, dog. This is a dope moment for me. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just want to say this is a dope moment for me. Actually, this is the first time I've, I've ever been on K Day. Really? So yeah. So K Day. I'm, another first. Go ahead. Yeah, another first. <laughs> and um, I've been. I'm glad. I'm just waking up. But basically, um. I remember K Day before New York. This was the first when it was AM yep. back in the days. Yep. It was the first twenty four hour hip hop station. Yeah, man. You know, when New York only had it on the weekends. And KDAY was ahead of the curve with that. Much respect due. It's great that y'all are here doing this and yes, I'm sir. honored to be on K Day. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna continue to carry that torch, man. Yeah. And looking forward to chopping up with you real soon. Man, congratulations and thank you. 
for what you've done for yeah. hip hop and what you've done Thank just you. for us, bro. For Thanks real. for having me, man. I appreciate this. I love the love. I love being out in Cali. Yes, yes sir. sir.